Hello, and thank you for watching our 10th Southern Four-Wheel Drive Association TechNet episode. Back in April, when we postponed our face-to-face -face training because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we started the Southern Four-Wheel Drive TechNet series. When we started, we thought we'd be only doing a few of these, but now we have off-road industry experts asking to participate, so it looks like we'll be doing these well into the summer. Today, we have Rick Berry from RCV Performance with us, and Rick's going to talk about the company, RCV Performance, and the world's strongest constant velocity axle. But first, let's talk about our prizes. BF Goodrich has provided us with a set of five KO2 or KM3 tires as the grand prize for the summer 2020 Southern Four Wheel Drive TechNet series. During the Facebook live stream, you will be provided a secret phrase that if you enter it into the Facebook comments during the live stream, your name will be placed in the bucket to win these tires. The drawing for these tires will be held at Southern Four Wheel Drive Association's Dixie Run event in October of 2020. You do not have to be present to win though. If you wanna get your name in the bucket again, or if you're watching this after the live Facebook stream, you can get a chance to win. To get your name in the hat again, at any time between now and the end of September 2020, go to Southern Four Wheel Drive Association's webpage, sfwda.org, and join Southern Four Wheel Drive as a member. RCV Performance has given us a $250 gift certificate to be given away during the live stream of this episode. To be eligible, you must answer the simple question during the Facebook live stream. What off-road club are you affiliated with? Just tell us in the comments your name and the off-road club you're affiliated with, and you'll be entered to win. If you're not affiliated with a club, just say you're not. That'll be okay. Last week's winner of the weekly prize was Cheryl Taylor from Destin, Florida. Cheryl, Cheryl won a worn Epic winch along with a pair of heavy-duty gloves Congratulations, Cheryl. Now for this week, let's bring Michael Morrison from Morrison Outdoor Adventures on screen and let him introduce Ricky Berry from RCB Performance. Hey, Mike. What's up, Facebook world? Hey, Al, how's it going? Oh, it's great here in sunny South Carolina. I see you're in sunny outside of Asheville. So That's um, right. I'm, I'm going to turn this thing over to you, and you guys can tell us all we want to know, everyone to know about axles, okay? Sounds good. Um, for the, okay. those of you that uh, don't know me, my name is Mike Morrison, Morrison's Outdoor Adventures. Um, as Al said, I'm just outside of Asheville right now. Beautiful, sunny day. You can see the mountains behind me. Um, but You've heard about me and all the other tech nets. So let's get to the main event. Tonight, we've got a really great opportunity. We've got Ricky from RCV Performance Products here tonight to talk to us and teach us about axles. Now, I'm sure if you've done some research about upgrading the axles in your vehicle, probably one of the first names at the top of the list that have come up has been RCV. Um, a lot of you probably run them in your vehicles or have heard someone say, hey, you need RCVs in your vehicle. So Super excited tonight. We're going to get some good knowledge put out about axles, why you should upgrade them, when you should upgrade them, what makes kind of the RCV axle design so incredible. But before we get into that, let's uh, give Ricky a chance to kind of introduce himself. So tell us a little bit about your background. Mike, uh, man, I've been four-wheeling for as long as I can remember. Uh, I mean, my dad took me in a 1980 CJ5 and it was all the rest is history. Um, so I've been very fortunate to be involved in the industry personally and professionally. Um, got to go on some great trips and see some great parts of this country and, uh, get to promote what I love while doing what I love. So it's, it's been great. Um, I've been with RCV several years. Um, you know, I think, golly, I actually was a sponsored driver from RCV. Um, back before they didn't have a good marketing guy like me and chose to sponsor a guy like me. 
And uh, man, it's been great to kind of see the evolution of this the sport along with the CV axle shaft that not a lot of people really know what it is or why is it so great. So it's uh, it's been a fun journey. Awesome. That's super cool. So tell us a little bit about um, the history of RCV um, before we start really getting into the axles. So RCV stands for Rockford Constant Velocity. Um, CV is Constant Velocity. Uh, we've been around for about 75 years. We started in kind of an aerospace. Uh, we did some early stuff with ATV stuff, and then it kind of transformed into the performance racing world, and it's kind of just taken off from there. We've learned so much through that that racing, that need, because um, that's really what, what we've done as a whole is people came to us with a problem, and we came to them with a solution. Very cool. Very cool. So now kind of explain to us, and you do have um, a couple of demonstrations there so people can see them, but what is a CV axle? I guess getting right into it, the, the CV is constant velocity. It doesn't care what angle that you put it in. It is just, it, it, it just is going. Um, so for example, you put a CV axle shaft in replace of a U-joint axle shaft. That U-joint has something called oscillation. Um, if you've ever turned, experienced a steering wheel shimmy or you've experienced any sort of front end hopping around while spinning the tires, that's due to the U-joint having an uneven uh, power delivery. So a uh, constant velocity, there is no slack, there's nothing, it's perfectly smooth power. Um, and that's due to the fact that, we'll try to show this here, this is the actual internals of a CV. and uh, these six points provide smooth contact through the oscillation or through the angle of the joint. So you're fully engaged at all, you know, turn all the way to lock, turn straight, it doesn't care. Um, and I think that's the benefit other than strength that often gets overlooked, the smoothness. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a really cool little upgrade. Yeah. So with, with U joints, you really only have what four points of contact with those. Whereas with the CVs, you've got six. Right, and the U-joint is uh, at its weakest when it's, you know, turned. You know, you've got uneven leverage on it. And, you know, again, the CV, it doesn't care what angle it's at. Yeah, so that's that's got to be a huge benefit because when we're off-road, you know, we're really having to crank that wheel to get our tires where we want them. So with the U-joint, that opens up a whole host of chances for something to break and fail. And when I, when I first got introduced from a, a recreational level into RCV, and I experienced it for the first time myself, I had a 1999 Jeep Cherokee Dana 44 front end uh, on 37s, and I was breaking those, what is it, 297X U-joints. And uh, granted, it was, you know, a hard, it was a trail rig, so it was seeing a lot of abuse, and I put the RCV in it and got to experience the smoothness, and it's a, it's really... You notice it pulling into a parking spot at the mall. I mean, it's it's incredible. Um, such a such a little difference could affect the performance of the vehicle overall like that. It's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, we hear a lot of people kind of talk about RCV and the strength of them, but what makes them basically the one of the strongest axles on the planet? I think it really comes down to how we make it. I mean, we are a 100% USA company. Uh, we use USA materials, locally sourced. We manufacture it all in-house in Rockford, Illinois. And we use our own proprietary heat treating. I mean, it's, it's, we've been able to work with that performance industry and, and really figure out the science of it um, to provide the, the strongest materials possible in addition to the strongest design possible. So... With that being said, we warranty it for life. I mean, we have full confidence in our product that, you know, you can put an, an oversized tire on your rig and this axle shaft will take it. You don't have to swap to a, a bigger axle assembly. You can just throw these in it and go. Um, but, you know, I, I would say that the, the root of the strength is the quality materials and the quality machining and craftsmanship. Awesome. So... When I go out, let's and let's just use a Jeep as kind of a perfect example. 
um, you know, solid axle vehicle. It's got that open knuckle design with, with the U joint in it. I go out and I buy that. Now I start modifying my vehicle. When do I need to look at starting to upgrade my axle shafts? You know, you're talking like a stock, stock Jeep, like a Rubicon, for example, maybe. Yes. Uh, you know, let's say, I'd say a 35 inch tire is, is when you're going to start being in that, that danger zone, which now the 35 inch tire is the average. I mean, that's like the first step, you know, that's the, you get a Jeep 35s, you know, now with these new JKs and JLs, you get a Jeep 40s. And yeah. So we warranty our, our Rubicon axles to a 40. Um, actually, for the jail, we were, we warranty it for a forty three because we don't. Think wow. We so, uh, but you know, I mean, that that's peace of mind, really. You know, you go out on these trips. For me, especially, I I want to just worry about having a good time. I don't want to worry about breaking anything. And uh, you know, you travel to this park, you travel across the country or whatever. You've got your your camper or your motorhome loaded up or you got your cabin rented you've put all this effort into it you go out on the trail the first day and you stuff it under a ledge and you break an axle and you're you know you're dead in the water it's a it's a tough situation so you know i think with an upgraded drivetrain that's peace of mind more than anything and that's worth a lot yeah because a lot of times and and i think they probably do this a little bit from the manufacturer but they kind of design in that weakest link there um in kind of the the U joint area or the knuckle area there, so that you know that's gonna that's gonna kind of break. And as we upgrade our vehicles and push them to the limits, they didn't really design it for. Um, that's when we really have to start thinking about that, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's there's some collateral damage with the broken U joint too. That you know, at these ball joints, you start you break a U joint, it puts a side load on a knuckle, and you could potentially turn your rig into a three wheel drive. And three -wheel. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, this industry has evolved so much, you know, the, the entry level four wheeler is at a level that is way higher than I remember being at an entry level four wheeler. And uh, I think that's due to technology, the vehicles. Um, I mean, it's, it's crazy. The, just the, the new Jeep Rubicon, that JL, uh, it's, it's amazing what you can do with a three inch lift kit. You can slap 40 inch tires on it and you can hit whatever trail you want, really. Yeah. Yeah, you put the 40-inch tires on it, but, you know, the first trip out and a little bit of extra skinny pedal and something pops, now you're looking for that axle shaft, right? That's, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of things that you need to do probably when you do that at the same time, of course. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So, a lot of people tend to ask uh, a question that, that I'll hear in training classes and stuff like that when we talk about axle upgrades and things is, you know, what's, what's the thing behind the orange boot with the RCVs? They've got the orange boot on them. So the, the history of the orange boot is not as great of a story as I wish it was. Um, <laughs> with some sort of epic story about the perfect, the perfect things. But originally when we first came out with the spherical ceiling technology boot, that's that orange boot, that's this guy right here. Um, so this orange boot was product of just a customer's request. Uh, the customer had an orange rig. The first customer ever had an orange rig and he wanted orange boots. So we made a run of orange boots and we liked them. They stood out, you know, you get in there. It's kind of the orange boots almost, I don't want to say status symbol, but people recognize them. They're like, okay, that guy, he knows to, you know, it's not a Walmart built Jeep. He's got quality parts in there. You know what I mean? So, um, it's it's become quite the status symbol and and for us we love it because it's so visible and yeah kind of its own marketing if you will it, it, it sells itself you can see it perform well you can talk to the guy you know it's it's right there so um but yeah it's a product of of uh its environment really it's not necessarily any sort of awesome historic moment that the orange boot come from it was just the guy went orange <laughs> <laughs> that's it's it's funny that you kind of bring up you know seeing someone with it on your vehicle because i remember you know walking around parking lots at the mall or walmart or whatever and if we saw a built jeep we would look underneath for rcvs to see if for sure they were wheelers or not <laughs> see i love that that's awesome yeah so kind of going back to the to the 
CV. Now, we talk a little bit about off-road performance, but I would imagine that with the extra points of contact, you're probably going to get a much smoother ride on the road, right? You know, it's, it's something we don't necessarily focus on. It's a byproduct benefit for sure. Um, but, you know, the CV is more efficient in all ways. It's, it's less friction. Um, you know, it's, it's going to have the whole thing is in grease, so it, it really has a, a longevity to it. Um, you know, you look, at, you look at any new vehicle on the road, they've got a CV axle in them you know granted it's not at this level of course but um the smoothness you know you're not going to have any binding um you can run four-wheel drive on the pavement if you wanted to and it's smooth um you know in a rain situation i don't know i'm just throwing that, uh, that option out there but uh, you know the the smoothness i'm trying to put it into words that it's really just something you have to experience. I mean, I, I can't, I can't hardly explain it. It's just a great benefit. Um, you don't know what you're missing until you have it. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And with everybody now, like you said, you know, it's so easy to take a Jeep or something and and get a much larger tire on it. But a lot of people now versus long time ago, they're they're not trailering their rigs places. They're having to drive them to where they want to go. So it's their daily driver that they're also wheeling. So they want good road mannerisms. And I know I remember driving old Jeeps with, with U joints and, you know, big Ram trucks and things like that. And, you know, getting that vibration and that feedback feedback from a U joint back through the steering wheel. And that could make for a miserable ride after a couple hours. Well, you know, and, and something that is worth mentioning too is maintenance. Um, you know, these things, you can pretty much slap them in and go. They have especially for the Jeep world. The Jeep world, there's a, a grease fitting. I don't know if you can see it well on this guy, but there's a grease fitting on the end of the stub shaft, and that grease fitting is gun drilled into the CB, whereas you don't have to take anything apart at all to, to maintenance it. So um, the boot is 99.9% .9 sealed, and what I mean by that is when grease begins to break down or overheat or whatever, and, and it will expel grease out of the boot, that's bad grease. That's grease you don't even want. So... You can pump the new grease in it. I'd say every other oil change. Um, you know, if you're if you're on the road and it's just so easy to maintain, um, it's really a five minute job. If you have hubcaps or like little plastic hubs that pop off of your wheels, you don't even have to take your wheels off to, to grease it. So um, I think that's a huge benefit in in the everyday driving. Um, you know the. Uh, weekend warrior, if you will, the guy that drives it to the trail. I mean, it's, it's a benefit on and off the road and maintenance and all around. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, you're basically what you're saying is about every 10,000 miles when you rotate your tires, the every other time, just pump some grease in there, right? Is there a specific type of grease that you guys recommend? There is. So every single kit that we send will include a tube of grease, and that tube of grease will last you a long time. Um, but we we have developed our own grease. Uh, it's a synthetic molly, and we've figured out that that works the absolute best. And you run that grease, and we'll warranty the axle for life, anything that ever happens to it. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. So as as far as greasing, what other type of maintenance? Do you ever have to rebuild the CV axles or anything like that after after time? No, we've got we've got customers that put fifty, seventy five thousand miles on these things, and yeah, there'll there'll be some rebuild kits. Our rebuild kits are cheap. I mean, it's it's less than ten percent the cost of the kit for a rebuild kit, and uh, a rebuild kit is this. Um, this is what you'll get with a rebuild kit. It's going to be your inner race, your cage, and your your bearings. These six bearings. And uh, it's, it's something you can do on your workbench and replace yourself, and it refurbishes your axle like new. Um, so you really, it really is the last axle you'll ever have to buy. Wow, yeah. And, you know, that's, speaking somewhat from experience, you know, that's something that is so much easier to do than kind of pressing out an old-style U-joint where you need a hydraulic press and the right tools and things like that. Um, I've rebuilt some RCVs in the past and it was, you know, super easy. It took us like maybe, you know, by the time we pulled the axle shafts to the time we put them back in, it was like maybe an hour and a half, two hours max. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's hustling too. Um, you know, these, it's something that you can do in your garage. Granted, you know, it's, it's a little intimidating at first and it's a messy job, but 
um, it's a small price to pay for never having to worry about breaking ever again. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Or having, you know, to continually keep buying axle shafts over and over. We know how expensive that can get. So having having an RCV in there that you can rebuild, keep it greased, you get that longevity out of it. That's a huge money savings. That's Absolutely. awesome. That's awesome. So now you guys aren't just into, you know, the jeeping kind of off-road industry. Um, what other type of things are you guys involved in? Oh, man, it's... I, I don't know a number of or a number of applications we make off the top of my head, but I, I short of saying all of them, we make a lot. So, um, you know, we we do a lot in the Jeep world. That's our number one primary market, of course. Um, the JK and JL. I mean, we got it all the way back to the, the CJ narrow track stuff. Um, you know, some J10, some niche Jeep stuff that people don't think we have. We we have it on the shelf, um, but we also do. Uh, a lot in Toyota. Um, honestly, that's kind of where our roots came from. Was was the Toyota world, um, and it, it grew into the Dana sixty world. Um, we do a lot of a lot of that as well. Um, IFS man, lately these Overland rigs. You know, you've got the new Toyota Tacoma on the Forerunner that is incredibly popular. Um, we've gotten into the IFS world with that. Uh, learned from racing. Uh, Ultra 4, if you're familiar with Ultra 4 Racing, King of the Hammers, uh, we are very involved in, in that style of racing, and we've learned a lot from that. You know, those guys are pushing the limits, so we take that uh, abuse and what we've learned from racing, and we apply it to the guy, the average Joe, going and weekend worrying, or or worrying. That's a hard word to say. <laughs> worrying. Uh, yeah. IFS whatever. So, um, you know, Raptor, we got into the UTV world a few years ago. Um, this is our display razor back here. And that has been incredible to see. Um, you would have never, they're like mini trophy trucks. So use put on a UTV axle is incredible. And we've been able to learn a lot of that, uh, heat, grease, a lot of stuff from that as well to, to better our entire product line. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a tough thing. Our sales guys are some of the best in the industry because they know, they have to know everything. They have to know about, you know, years of Suzuki Samurai. They got to know about years of Rockwells, you know, two and a half ton Rockwell stuff. Like it's, it's tough on those guys and they're good. So for us to be able to, you know, basically support any kind of off-road vehicle you have is really nice. It's, a, it's a nice to be able to go to any show, any event. And talk to anybody about any rig and and be able to help them have a solution to their problem yeah that's that's really cool um so we've we've been kind of talking about jeeping but i think it is important um to kind of talk about the the cv axles on ifs because you know overlanding is getting really important and you know the ifs when you start to lift it it really puts those stock cv axles in a bind right so as far as kind of in that application at those extreme angles, how, how does the RCV start to kind of perform there? So we'll take the, uh, take the new Toyota for the Tacoma, like the 05 and up, for example. We use that as a base because I, I think that's becoming one of the more popular applications. Um, you know, way back when you go off-road, you're like, IFS is terrible. You don't want you a solid axle swap, whatever. You know, put a, put a solid axle under it if it's IFS, no matter what. That's the solution. And now, so much, uh, you know, we're using for the, the 05 and up Tacoma, which is also the FJ Cruiser uh, and Forerunner, um, we're using Dana 60 architecture in there. Like, so this, this CV joint is a Dana 60 CV joint. And that's essentially what you'll find in the, the Toyota IFS stuff. So that we've, we've made the CV housings larger. Um, of course, we're using a, a high-end, Molly bar, it's 300M um, in there. So the larger CV, more angle. Um, it's it's really limitless. We warranty it to a 40 inch tire on the Tacoma stuff. So you know, wow. luck with it. Um, we're not worried about breakage. Uh, we've been experimenting with new boots. We've got boots that are lasting longer. Um, we've got these orange bellowed RCV boots to go under there that we've developed ourselves. So 
really IFS is not a negative at all anymore. In fact, it's it's quite possibly better than a solid axle in many occasions. Uh, endurance, long distance, stuff like that. Going fast is a time off road. IFS is the way to go. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, most definitely. A lot from the on IFS, to be honest with you. Um, so it's it's been quite quite the experience to see the evolution in the industry because we've been able to take like Ultra Four. I, I mentioned that earlier. We we do a majority of the IFS Ultra Four cars, and these things are 800 horse, 40 inch tire, probably the most abusive vehicles on the planet, and they're running our product with success. And we take what we've learned from that, and we, again, put it onto the recreational guy and uh could be happier yeah so with uh i'll share a story i used to do quite a bit of military training and we used a lot of toyota vehicles they they like toyota vehicles but uh we had uh it was a toyota fj cruiser and i remember had the factory oem uh axle shafts on it and we blew one out in a training so we ordered another one put it in there and within the first two hours of training, it got blown again. So we replaced it and put another one in and it got blown out again. Basically, you know, just getting loaded up when those tires were turned at a full angle. Um, finally, I believe it was fourth or fifth set. We put a set of RCVs in there and uh, ran them for two years. I think when I left the company, they were still running them. <laughs> so it, it made a huge difference, right? I mean, that vehicle was getting pounded on day in and day out. Um, and the problem was we had a larger tire on a factory kind of OEM CV axle and it just couldn't take the abuse and the angle that it was working at with the lift. And, you know, just as simple as someone letting the clutch out on it with the tire turn sharp was causing the CV axle to blow out. Yep. And even, you know, sometimes it's not even the size of the tire. It's just a, a torque situation or a bind off road or whatever. You know, I, you know, we had that conversation earlier about what size tire do I think you need an RCV? I mean, it, it's not necessarily a size tire thing. It's a driving style. I mean, there's so many variables that come into it, of course. Um, you know, I would say you always need an RC. <laughs> is, the, is the answer to that. Yeah, always. That's, that's true. You know, you can upgrade to an RCV axle for peace of mind, even if you have stock tires on there. Um, you know, I've had vehicles where I get a lot of vibration back from a U-joint that's going bad or something along those lines. Um, and you know, I mean, that's that's really aggravating. It was a stock vehicle doing that, right? So you could upgrade to an RCV axle and give yourself peace of mind in that realm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So outside of kind of off-roading and stuff, do you guys do anything like um, with industrial or fleet type stuff? I would imagine like power companies and stuff like that could certainly use your guys' products. No, we've, we've been able to take this CV and put it into so many applications. Um, you know, this, the PTO shafts, um, military applications, the, the Rockwell, uh, this big, big bell. We call it the big bell, but it's essentially what we developed to put in a Rockwell housing, which is like the big deuce and a half military trucks. They originally would pull those axles out and put them under like rock bouncers, and they needed a solution for that, so we came out with this big bell. Well, we've been able to use that same big bell, which is massive. I mean, I wish I, wish I had one here to show you. It's, it's seven inches in diameter. Um, wow. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's seven inches in diameter. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so military, I mean, that, those endurance mining, I mean, we've been able to provide solutions to that kind of, those industries as well and have great success because it's the same thing. Those guys are abusing their machines and trail riding is abusive and racing is abusive. So it all translates and, uh, we, we, we're there for solutions. See if kind of you had anything else to share before we kind of move into the Q and a session, maybe something I haven't quite asked yet. Um, uh, you know, some tech tips or something about axle shafts, maybe even factory axle shafts as far as maintenance or anything al along those lines, man, I, you know, starting out, you know, if you're, if you're first getting your rig, you've got factory axles in it, you weak, you know, you've got a click in your front end. Um, it's liable to be a U-joint wearing out. And to replace a U-joint is is not that bad, um, but it's going to happen again. 
and you know if you're experiencing anything like that now's your time to upgrade um to these guys maintenance is is less and uh that peace of mind like i mentioned before so really it's it's a it's kind of a a, a safe upgrade if you will it's going to save you other parts it's going to be easier on your steering um i guess that is a, a, a point that i didn't cover is these have a greater steering angles than a u-joint axle you're going to be able to get up to upwards of 40 maybe even 45 degrees depending on the application so wow. you'll, you'll be able to further um without any sort of binding um you know so if you were to go hydro assist for example hydro assist puts some additional strain on your uh on your steering sometimes and pushes it past its limits and with these axles you have nothing to worry about there so um i would say that there's so many benefits to it i i couldn't even start to really go on and list it until you experience it it's it's something you gotta yeah yeah and the downsides are you could end up sitting on the side of the trail right so very cool well so let's do some q a i've got some good questions here um, one of the first ones from Blake, what's the difference between a Burfield and a CV? Uh, not much. Uh, uh, so the Burfield was the Japanese Toyota CV. Um, it's a very similar setup, uh, off the top of my head. I'm not exactly sure if it was six bearing setup or if it was something more like a, I think they called it tripods. Um, which is essentially a three point with some bearings inside uh, so on, on that, on my ignorance on the, the, the burr field, but um, they're very similar. The main difference is this one's made right here in the USA. Uh, we've used a lot of different technologies to upgrade it. And it's, while it's the same basic function, it's totally different quality. Yeah. I know with burr fields, you actually have to remove the axle shaft and um, repack the burr field. You have to separate uh, the inner and outer axle shafts and repack it with grease. Whereas with yours, we were talking earlier, you can just shoot grease into the end of the axle so you don't have to pull it all the way out. Absolutely. And in any application we have, whether the grease fitting be a, a gun drilled stub shaft or a grease fitting directly on the CV, you don't have to pull it apart to maintenance it ever. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Because that, that's always a pain with, with the Toyota Burr field. So that's a big deal. All right. So Jaybird wants to know, do you have something to fit a Land Rover Defender 90? And can you make it yellow? Of course, Jaybird, you would want to know if it was yellow. Yeah, I think Krylon has a plastic paint that's <laughs> for that. Um, uh, we do not have that application directly. But uh, message me and I can point him in the right direction. Awesome. Awesome. So you heard the answer there, Jay Bird. Shoot him a message and he'll help you out. All right. Lorenzo Morales. Uh, warranty, even if the axle is non non stock for the vehicle. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if it was a it's an aftermarket axle and you guys cover some of them even up to a 43 inch tire. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can put a uh, if you wanted to put a custom Dana 80 underneath your Samurai. Uh, it'll be warrantied. Actually, our Big Bell stuff has no limit on the warranty for the record. So if anybody wants to go 40, 40 spline or 47 spline, um, you can run 2,000 horsepower and 50-inch tires, and we're totally cool with that. <laughs> wow, that's some torque on an axle shaft. If you use the wrong grease, it severely limited the lifespan of those uh, burr fields. So even you know, in our training classes and stuff, we always kind of recommend going back with the manufacturer's recommendations because you guys have done the research, right? Um, and you guys know what what those wear cycles are and what those maintenance cycles are. So I think that's, a, that's perfect that uh, going back with what you guys recommend as a grease. So um, Scott Pope, can JK Rubicon RCVs be upgraded with the stub shafts that work with the TerraFlex full float hub kit for the Dana 44? Absolutely, yes. Email us at sales at RCV Performance. Tell us what you have and what you want, and we can get you just those components. Uh, it'll retain your inner uh, your inner shafts, um, and it'll your out, out outer stub will be, of course. I, I, was that a full float? Is that what I heard? It was a TerraFlex free spin kit. Yeah, the full float hub kit for the Dana Forty Four. We got everything we need to uh, get you fixed up. Awesome. 
So um, another question from Lorenzo, if they do break, where do you normally see the cotton carnage in the racer and the stub for, or the inside shaft? You know, it's, it's not necessarily a common, I can say this is going to happen necessarily um, because so many, uh, you know, we've, we've been doing this for so long. We've, we've seen it. Any, anything's possible and, you know, anything can break. Um, but I couldn't really pinpoint it to one thing. Uh, we do have the ability to upgrade parts. So we have a 300 M inner kit. So that's upgrades your CV components and your inner axle shaft to a 300 M material, which is, uh, significantly stronger. So that could limit, you know, a, another, a breaking area and transfer it or something like that. Um, but I couldn't really point to one thing and say, Hey, watch out for this. Um, but I will say that if you buy a kit, we have the upgrade available for it in an upgrade warranty. So say you buy our base level kit and you have a failure or have an issue, uh, we'll do a warranty upgrade where you just pay the difference of the, the next best kit or the top of the line kit. So, uh, wow. yeah, we'll, we'll work with you on that. That's super cool. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Scott Pope's got a really good, uh, question here. Has RCV considered jumping into the drive shaft game? Man, we we have worked on this. That is a loaded question. Um, <laughs> short answer is yes. We have thought about it. We have looked into it. Um, we want to do it. Uh, early on, we did a, a, a same prototypes. Obviously, this orange boot here, um, that's not going to be a, a high speed boot and you're going to see five times the speed of your axle shaft at a drive shaft, um, you know, or four times depending on what your gear ratio is. But, um, so that's, that's been the challenge for us is figuring out how to make it work, but we can make it work as far as the strength is concerned, but, um, we got to figure out the whole package. So we don't want this to be a maintenance thing. We want it to be ready to go bolted in and never worry about it again. So until we can get that out, but uh, yeah, short answer. Yes. We've thought about it and we're maybe soon. Maybe. <laughs> Perfect. You guys heard it, right? Maybe soon. All right. Thomas Allen Jr. Says, uh, do you do a Dana 30? How big a tire would you say it will hold up to? So a Dana 30. Yes, we do all the Dana thirties. Um, we, Unless you upgrade the locker, uh, the warranty is up to a 35. If you upgrade the locker to a 30 spline locker, uh, we'll warranty it to a, a Dana 44 stuff. Um, that smaller shaft of the Dana 30 on the in, inner splines is the limiting factor. Uh, the rest of the parts are the same as a uh, Dana 44, essentially. So, um, yeah, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, if you want to run a 37 on your Dana 30, you go to a, a upgraded locker and we can make that happen. That's awesome. That's super, super awesome. Cause we know where that Dana 30 is kind of, kind of a weak point. Right. So very cool. Well, Ricky, I can't, uh, I can't say thank you enough for coming out and spending time with us um, and answering all these questions um, and giving us some insight into the AXA world. Um, certainly we see the benefit to running RCVs um, and things like that. So, uh, Al, if you have any questions, you want to chime in, um, maybe you've got something a little extra. Uh, I do want to remind folks that uh, if you enter the phrase, hello, everyone, I'm a member of, and you put your club name, you'll be eligible to win the, the RCB $250 gift certificate. So jump in there and do that. We'll announce the winner next week. Mike? What, what you want people to do, like, share, what was that? What's your phrase? <laughs> make, guys, make sure uh, that you like and share. Tell your, your brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, sure. dogs, hairdresser, I don't care. Smash the share button. Tell everybody to, to watch these videos right now. Make sure you also go check out um, RCV social media, guys. Make sure you give them a like. And I'll tell you what, if you've got RCVs on your vehicle, Snap a picture of it. Hashtag RCV, right? Got to show off those orange boots. Got to show off those orange boots. So thanks a ton, Ricky. Man, I've learned a ton uh, in this class and uh, look forward to seeing you out on the trail sometime. And I appreciate you guys having me on here and getting to talk about what I love. For the 53 people that are still watching, 
Uh, we're gonna we're we're gonna be doing these TechNet sessions for for uh, many more weeks, I think. So uh, if you've got topics that you're interested in, uh, send it to me or Mike or one of your Southern Four Wheel Drive Association uh, board of director members, uh, and suggest a topic. And maybe we can go find an industry expert to come in like Rick did tonight and talk to us about that. This is really good, guys. Thank you a lot, Rick. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, and if anybody has questions for Rick, you can run them through me or Mike. All right. So thanks, everyone. Uh, I'll, I'll leave this open so you can get you nice little comments in if you want to for another minute or two. And we'll tell Ricky and uh, Michael good night. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Uh, hope to see you on the trail. Get outside. Live some adventures, guys.